What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to show you something pretty cool I've recently discovered and it is called Mobile Miner. Now Mobile Miner actually lets you mine Bitcoin or actually other various cryptocurrencies on your iOS device. So this is really cool. Um, and given that the most recent iPhone 10 is more powerful than the current gen MacBook Pro, it's uh, got a good chance of making you some money. So let's jump into it and I'll show you how to do it. The first thing you're going to need is the mobile miner application itself. So you can hop onto the link included in the description here. You're going to want to browse to the releases button right there. And under first release, you'll see the mobileminer.ipa file. So download that guy. And now we're going to use Cydia Impactor, which is a clever tool that allows you to install apps without a jailbreak. So I've actually covered this in a previous video, so I'm going to splice that clip in here. First thing you're going to need to do is go to cydiaimpactor.com. If you've got two-factor enabled, and you will know if you don't, otherwise don't worry about it, you need to generate an app-specific password. So go to appleid.apple.com and then log in. Scroll down, hit the edit button next to security, and click the generate password button. Name it whatever you want. The name doesn't really matter. And then be sure to copy whatever password it gives you. So this is the password that Impactor is going to use to sign your app and load it onto your phone. Open the Cydia Impactor app that you downloaded earlier and make sure it recognizes your phone. There's going to be a long string of numbers. This is your phone's UDID. That's not super important. Next, drag and drop the IPA file from the GitHub link onto the Impactor window. And a pop-up is going to come up asking you for your Apple account info. So don't worry, this isn't sketchy. It just goes straight to Apple. Enter your Apple ID, your password. After that, it goes through the motions and installs the app onto your phone. Next, most users are going to get a message telling you that you need to trust the profile or the developer in order to run the app. And so this is really simple. You just go to Settings, General, Device Management, and then you click your Apple ID and choose Trust or whatever it is. After that, the, the app is guaranteed to launch without an issue, and you're good. The last thing we need to do before we can mine is set up a wallet address. So Electronium is the easiest currency to mine with this app. And what you'll do is go to electronium.com. We can see the homepage here. And if you have an account, you'll want to fetch your existing wallet account. Otherwise, you'll create an account. So I'll warn you, this process does take a little while because you're required to set up two-factor authentication. Uh, it might take you a few hours to set up completely. When you're done setting up your wallet account, you need your user token, which is going to be a long string of numbers, along with the default Electronium pool address. We'll use these in the next part when we actually configure the app. Okay, so now that we've got the app installed, we'll go ahead and launch it, and I'll show you how to configure it. First thing is notifications. These just tell you when you've mined a block successfully if there's a problem. On the home page, you can see a few text boxes here, but there's really only a couple things that we're interested in changing. So under the active mining configurations, we can see the pool URL and the user. These are the two items that I had you save from Electronium earlier when we set up our accounts. The pool URL just points the miner at a specific mining pool, and the user is your user token, which is the wallet that you take the payouts in when you mine a share. If you click the gear icon, it takes you to the settings menu, and there's only really one thing in here that we care about. So under the settings, the most important item here is this keep alive in background. The keep alive in background keeps the app from uh, timing out like a normal iOS app does, and so it continues to mine for you in the background. Now I'll warn you, this will eat through your battery, and so if you're going to keep this option on, be sure to have a power bank or have your phone plugged in. Okay, so now to test the configuration and make sure it's good, we're going to click the Start Mining button here. It takes a little bit of time to spool up, but you'll know that things are working right when you see the hash rate bump up. So right now I'm getting about 10 hash per second, which is not fantastic, um, but I am running this on an older device. It's not super ideal. 
You can also pop open the log and it gives you more information about what exactly is going on in the background. So it gives you some info on if you've accepted rewards, uh, if you've accepted some blocks, and if you have any errors. You'll note every once in a while you see a rejected block that's normal. It's just part of the standard mining process. So to stop mining, you just tap the stop mining button here. As I mentioned, if you leave the app without stopping the mining, you will actually continue to go in the background, assuming you have that run in background setting on. Uh, just be aware of that. It's not advisable if you're only on battery power. So you'll want to stop if you're just using your phone for everyday usage. Uh, you'll get the waiting for processes to stop, but then it'll eventually uh, stop as a whole. So that's all there is to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I helped you set this mining client up on your iOS device. Uh, it works for more than just iPhones, so you can set it up on an iPad or a spare iPod Touch if you have one lying around. And yeah, get to mining. Hopefully you make some money on this. Uh, ask any questions in the comments section. Let me know if you're having any problems. And thanks for watching.